Hello, this is Pastor Roland, checking in to see how you're doing. Hope you're doing better. You know, the ideal thing for me would be if uh, people who visited my site, listened to my radio program, or watched my YouTube videos, you know, my lectures or sermons on YouTube, or read some of my books, um, tried the meditation that I have and found it helpful, continued to practice it, and then began to see positive changes in their life, like magic. You see, see what you need is for God to enter your life. That's what you need. But like I began to say, my, my, what would make me happy is that some people would begin to practice the meditation and find their way back to, that, to, to the heavenly estate. Find their way back to a nearness, to, uh, to truth, to innocence, to a true life. Find the true life, okay? And leave behind the baggage of the past, okay? And then be okay. See, that's the goal, is to be okay. We don't want to be always in therapy, always in um, recovery, always a victim, always chronic. See? The idea is to get better. So now what you need to find is the heavenly estate. There's a beautiful translation of, uh, of uh, the Sermon on the Mount. And it's... Uh, it's translated beautifully from the Aramaic, the language that Jesus spoke. Texts were found, one of them the Corboris Manuscript. You can order it. It's in a book, the Corboris Manuscript. It's very beautiful. It talks about the heavenly estate. See, Jesus said, blessed are those who, uh, remember? Who mourn for they for they shall be comforted. So those who are blessed have found a heavenly estate. Will find a heavenly estate. See the other way you can begin to see where heaven might be and see and see how what you shouldn't do is by watching what other people do. And seeing how it's not good. <laughs> okay, so where do most so where do most people live? They live in their imagination, in their thought world down there in their dreams and schemes and daydreams and worries and doubts and fears and reliving the past and planning for the future or worrying about the future and scheming and see that's where they live down there okay and then and then just just on the other side of down there is what hell see so the human being is kind of like between two worlds so so there's the material creation all around you, the material creation. And of course we have material bodies, animal bodies, to get us from point A to point B and to see things and to do things, okay. But then we have a soul, okay. Now now the material creation is, 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 on one side is heaven, on the other side is hell. There's one way of looking at it. So the heavenly estate is nearby. But most people live down, down in their Alice in Wonderland, down, 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 the rabbit trap, okay, the rabbit hole. And down there, that's where hell, the guy with the horns, let's see, tempts the soul and confers with the soul and cohabits with the soul when you're down there. See, that, that's why the thoughts that come to you. In a moment, in a moment of of anger, for example, what kind of thoughts come to you? Or in a moment when you're resentful, awful thoughts. Where do those thoughts come from? Did you really think those thoughts? Do you really want to think those thoughts? No, you may be temporarily in agreement with them when you're resentful. See, or when there's some naughty thing that you're tempted to do, then those consoling thoughts that say, "Oh, it's okay. Everybody's doing it. Nobody will know." You see that well. You you may be in temporary agreement with with those kind of thoughts, but where did those, where have those thoughts gotten you? So anyway, you got the idea. You don't want to be living down there on the holodeck of the virtual reality, 
a world of the imagination. You want to come out of it. Okay. Now there is a proper use of imagination. Someone, for example, like Einstein, okay, used his imagination properly. Okay. First intuition. See, a lot of people don't know. Einstein talked a lot about intuition. Okay. It was through in, it was by intuition that he came upon his great discoveries. Intuition. Wordly was wordlessly inspired. Okay. And then he used his imagination to do little thought experiments. See, but that was the proper use of the imagination. Okay. The same thing with the intellect. It has its proper use. Okay, I use my intellect. Okay, I need my intellect in order to um, to uh, to write and to speak. Okay, but the thoughts that come forth are good thoughts. See, the ideas that come out are good ones, helpful ones, uplifting ones. See, useful ones. Okay, so you see how. The intellect is, uh, uh, or the imagination, the intellect is, is like a no man's land. So it's it's either it's either um, um, put for a good use or for bad use. And most people are down in their imagination, scheming things and then worrying, scheming and worrying. Okay, then the guy with the horns is just on the other side, whispering uh, negative things and and putting up images to tempt you. See? All right. So what are you going to do about that? Well, just get out of your imagination. Get out of your thinking. Get out of worrying. Get out of the thought stream. Come back up to reality to where the birds are singing. Okay? To where I am, for example, in reality and the birds are singing. Okay? And uh, then you can observe thoughts. You can observe them going by. See, but you're not in them. You're not lost in them. You're not subject to them. I've talked about this so many times, so I don't want to get too deeply into that. You can you can get my books and read my articles and listen to my videos and so on. But right now, I just want to say that uh, I'm hoping that more people, just like Paul said, he said, you know, you 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 know, some of you are still like spiritual babes. Now you should be eating meat, spiritual meat. <laughs> In other words, they sh you should be mature. But some are still spiritual babes, haven't even gotten to first base yet. So you want, if you want to get to first base, just a couple of basic things. Number one, get the meditation so you, you can pr so, so you have a little help learning to stand back from those um, negative thoughts, tempting thoughts. Okay, just stand back from them. Number two. Start to uh, let go of resentment. Don't resent other people. Now that you've met, made a big mess out of your life, now maybe you can forgive other people. Okay, they're not they're not doing things on bad things on purpose for the most part. They just they just can't stop themselves. They can't. They're they're just they're totally unaware, misguided, lost sheep. So forgive your parents. Okay, forgive your father. The world was too much for him. Okay, forgive your mom. Your poor unloved mom. Okay, forgive the other kids in school that were bullies. Somebody bullied them. Somebody did it to them. Whatever somebody did to you, someone did it to them. Okay, so forgive them. Forgive everybody. Forgive yourself. Don't hate yourself. See, see, the ego is always trying to play God. That's the other thing you have to realize that you're guilty of playing God. You go around judging other people. Then when you acquire a great deal of guilt for secretly judging other people and resenting them, then you then you judge yourself. See, it's just another ego way of escape of avoiding reality, of being humbled in the light. See, that's what you, the most wonderful thing is if you could be humbled in the light, in God's light. You see your error, you're sorry about what you see, and you just experience a a, a, a regret. A helpless sadness and you realized you can't save yourself that's the other thing some of you are trying to save yourself <laughs> studying and going through all kinds of um, things I don't know trying to save you can't save yourself so the old expression let go and let God it's actually very good but you need a little help see
so the meditation will help you okay then if you came back to a, an objective point of view instead of being sub, just subjectively lost down in your imagination and looking at everything from an ego point of view see then come up come up to objectivity and see things as they are then you you will be receptive to sound instruction see now down lost in your imagination down in your Alice in Wonderland rabbit hole down there why maybe you can't even hear me or if you hear me it, you don't get it or if you do get it it sounds threatening because it's true see the truth is threatening the more we flee from God see the more we escape from him the more guilts we acquire and the more the truth is threatening see but face the truth uh, is a better face it now than later be very nice if you could face the truth then you'll find that yeah the truth makes you feel bad temporarily because it's true it's like you know it's like if you're studying mathematics and your test comes back and there were mi mistakes well you don't like seeing that you made mistakes but in a way you're glad because now you can see what you don't know and and uh, improve you see your errors you're glad to see your errors they don't make you feel good it's not you don't feel good seeing your errors but you're glad because you know that it's good for you okay so um, hopefully these things will be of uh, use to you so you can instead of being spiritual if, I'm glad if you're spiritual babes though that's fine if you're just getting started and trying the meditation and it can be a great relief to 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 discover someone like me see that it's like a breath of fresh air I sound like a kindred spirit I talk about things that you've always yearned for and searched for and wanted okay so now you know they exist okay now you just have to find find them with a little help see you're very close very very close some of you just need a little help like the meditation for example Okay. I want to show you my book. Just got it in from um, from Amazon. This is my new book. Let's see if I can put it up here where you can see it. It's too bright. Well, how's that? How's that look? Okay. It's called a brief introduction to stress management. Principles and practice. Okay. It's a wonderful, wonderful little book. I actually wrote it, uh, I think, five or six years ago. Now I've updated it repub and published it. It's only about 60 pages long. It's it's easy read. But you know what this is? It's like it's um. It's the psychology, the physiology, of uh, stress management. Okay, with a little bit of the metaphysics thrown in. Okay see so there's a psychological aspect of stress an emotional component physiological aspect okay and then of course a metaphysical okay well this one is quite uh, quite nice in that it talks um, about uh, the basic uh, psychology of stress stress and how to manage stress it talks about letting go of resentment it talks about intimidation how to deal with intimidation okay how to deal with negative thoughts which stresses so on very very nice book so you you might want to get it you can get it f from me for a small donation of any amount then I'll send it to you by email as an attachment in PDF form you know, like an ebook or if you'd like to have the paperback then you can go to amazon.com okay and get it uh, get it there so Hope you enjoyed today's little session. My name is Pastor Rowan.